While there are many different ways to save for a college education, two common ways are through a 529 plan or a custodial brokerage account. In order to decide which one of these works better for your family, it's important to know the difference in these accounts. In this video, we will uncover the pros and the cons of 529 plans as well as custodial brokerage accounts for college savings. A 529 or custodial brokerage account, the first thing we need to know is how they work. So a 529 plan, it starts with after-tax funds that are put into an account. And from there, they can be invested. And those invested funds will then grow and continue to grow tax-free until it's time to use them for a qualified educational expense. When they're used for a qualified educational expense, they come out tax-free. So there's a federal tax savings and an opportunity for growth there from that tax savings. Additionally, some states will even offer a state income tax deduction for contributions in the year that they're made, which offers even more tax savings. If you'd like to find out more about the benefits of a 529 plan, please check out our video. It'll be in the show notes. Brokerage accounts are regular investment accounts that you can use to invest money. Funds in these accounts are not locked into retirement accounts or education savings accounts, so they can be added or taken out at any time with no tax penalty. Once the money is added to the account, it can be used to invest in stocks, mutual funds, index funds, or bonds, or kept even in a money market account or a cash account. Because the brokerage account is not a retirement or savings account, there are no specific tax benefits to using this type of account for these expenses. Some families may choose to use a brokerage account over a 529 account to save for their children's future education. And that's okay. We just need to know the pros and cons for each. You may be asking, is a 529 a brokerage account? It is not. It is a college savings account or an education savings account that is specifically meant for education expenses. Brokerage accounts have many uses that are not only just for education, and there are also some other key differences between a brokerage account and a 529 plan. One of the key differences between a custodial brokerage account and a 529 plan is for financial aid. And a 529 plan, most often the student is not the owner of the 529 plan, and therefore it does not count as a student's asset on the FAFSA. Student assets are weighted much heavier than parents' assets are when they go to do the federal calculation for expected family contribution. So it's favorable to have a 529 plan in a parent's name than it is to have that as a student's asset. Conversely, if it's a custodial brokerage account, one that is in the child's name, when they become to the age of majority, that account becomes their asset and therefore will be weighted much heavier when it comes to the federal calculation for financial aid. So it's not as desirable to have that asset under the child's name. Now, conversely, if a, if a brokerage account is under the parent's name, it'll count just the same as a 529. So therefore, there's no real difference in the financial aid application when it comes to that standpoint, if the brokerage account is owned by parent as opposed to the child. Another difference between the two is for the beneficiaries. On a 529 plan, the beneficiary is the person whose education will be paid for, and that happens when the owner designates a beneficiary. Now, if the owner of the 529 plan should die, it doesn't necessarily go to the beneficiary. It will go to whoever the designated beneficiary upon death is. Those could be two different people. And then the new beneficiary of that plan becomes the owner of the 529 plan, and then they can choose who the beneficiary is going to be, whether it will remain the student that it was or whether it gets transferred to another. On a brokerage account, there is no beneficiary per se because it's the owner of it. So if it's a plan that you own or a parent owns, then it is yours until you die. And at that point, it would go to whoever you have designated as the beneficiary. If the brokerage account is in a minor's name, the custodian remains in control of that until the minor reaches the age of majority, which is somewhere between 18 and 21, depending upon the state. At age of majority, they take control of the brokerage account. And the only way there's a beneficiary on that is then if at that time that person were to die, and then it would be passed on to the beneficiary. So there's some difference in there. All it's all about who owns it and what purpose it's for. Lifetime contribution maximums. 
There's not a whole lot of difference between the two accounts on this one, except for one small one. So with a 529 plan, there's no contribution maximum. However, some states do have a cap at how big the 529 plan can be. Because again, it's designed to pay for college. They don't want it to get too big, so it has to be a reasonable amount. And each state has determined its own like caps, if you will, for what that is, what that can be. For some it's 300,000 and for others it's 500,000. So you'll just have to research and see which one your state is. As far as brokerage accounts go, there is no lifetime contribution maximum. You can continue to contribute to that as much as you want. Gift taxes. Now this is one of those areas where there's not much difference between the two because for a 529 or a brokerage account, any person can give another person up to $16,000. At least that's the federal gift tax exemption before you have to file a gift tax return in 2022. And if you happen to be a couple, say grandma and grandpa both want to contribute to a 529 plan on behalf of a beneficiary, they can do a total of $32,000. It's the same for a brokerage account. The difference becomes though, with a brokerage account, if the parents own it, then the gift actually goes to the parent because there's not a designated beneficiary and it's not set aside for education expenses. Or those same grandparents could give it if the account was in the minor's name, then it would go to the minor. So they can still do the same, either 16,000 for one person or 32,000 for two people, but they can't do it to both accounts. You can only do one. And so it, remember, this is just a caution. The $16,000 limit is per person, not per account. Just something to keep in mind. But let's suppose that you did do over the 16,000 and what would happen then? Well, it starts, you still have to file the gift tax return, but it starts to add up over the years until you finally reach the federal estate and gift tax exclusion amount. And right now that sits at 11.7 million. So if you're not going to give away 11.7 million, it doesn't really matter. You just have to make sure that you fill out that gift tax return each year if you go over the $16,000 to an individual person. Let's talk about the tax benefits. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but just to reiterate, in a 529 plan, the owner owns the plan, but because they've already paid taxes on the initial contribution and the growth is growing tax-free, and as long as it's used for a qualified education expense, it comes out tax-free, there's no taxes to be paid. As well as if the beneficiary they never owned it, so they don't have to pay any taxes on it either. This is a huge savings for families that are trying to prepare for education expenses. On the other side though is the brokerage account. And because it's not a retirement account and it's not an education savings account, there are no tax benefits for it. So just remember, if once you put that money in with those after-tax dollars, once you go to sell those funds that you've invested in, whether they were stocks, mutual funds, index funds, bonds, when you go to sell it, there will be capital gains assessed short term if it was for less than a year and those are at your marginal tax bracket or long-term gains which will be based on the long-term gains rate uh, based on your income so that's how the two are taxed obviously in this situation if you're trying to save for education costs the 529 plan is going to be more favorable now who can contribute to a 529 plan and to a brokerage account the answer is anyone. Other than paying attention to the gift tax exclusion and paying attention to those gift tax return and the maximum amount before a state in gift taxes kick in at the federal level, anyone can contribute to either plan. So is a 529 plan better than a brokerage account? Well, as usual in the financial world, it depends on what your goals are for the account. If your goal is to save for education, especially higher education, the 529 plan is going to be more favorable. But if you're looking for flexibility in the account without any tax penalties, the brokerage account may be a better option. So it's really about what is the goal for you. There are pros and cons to either of these routes to save for education, along with many others. If you would like help trying to figure it out, figure out which one is best and how to save for college, please give us a call or get in touch with us. We offer a free 30 minute discovery call. Where we'd be more than happy to talk about what some of the other options may be and what might be best for your family. Also, why don't you comment below and tell me about which one you think is the better option for your family, or let me know if you have any questions. And by the way, this is a series that we're doing on 529s. So feel free to subscribe and that way you won't miss the next episode. I'll see you then.